and we're back. So let's get into the spoilers because there is so much to talk about. It's got a lot to unbox here. <laughs> oh my gosh. So Bill and Ted, they, after the events of the second movie, they their next album was huge, just off the charts, number one. And then from there, it was just a downward spiral to where you get to a wedding of 40 people that got essentially unplugged. Yep. Because, <laughs> you know, Ted's dad's an asshole. Yes, he is. And he's still <laughs> uber mad at his wife for marrying his own son. And it's, that was so weird. Such an awkward that moment when you're taken out so with your ex-stepmom wife in front of your dad. And it, that was the thing that they made. It started from the get go making fun of its own absurdity. Just yes. like, it's like, I'm my own nephew, my dad's son, but also his brother. And now my dad is his own son. <laughs> it's like, what? It is complicated. It was family ties, you know? It was very cringy, to be honest. It was, it was a funny cringy, though. <laughs> but it was super cringy. And then immediately from there you get introduced to B and T, which is Billy mm -hmm. and Theodora. Yes. And those are the kids, of course. And immediately you can just tell they got they love music a lot. They have a good acumen, you could say. And a very good uh, vocabulary about it as well. Yes, they're quite knowledgeable. Indeed. <laughs> Despite having the same kind of lingo as their dads. Yeah, and so we after that we go into what essentially is couple therapy, couple therapy, <laughs> which they go in together as a couple, and it's just like it's a lot of wheeze. Yeah, yeah which is a problem. Like, it's always, but the girls are finally sick of it. Yeah, so they've taken a stand, but the boys don't quite understand at all because we love you is not acceptable. Exactly, they're still dumb as shit. But I mean, they're so <laughs> innocent about it, which is why we love the beat of the shit. Yes. <laughs> but needless to say, therapy does not go tremendously well. And then they realize, wait, we still have to save the world, and they get kicked out of therapy because the therapist just wants to talk to the wives for a bit. And if you look at her face, you understand <laughs> why. Jeez. <laughs> And it gets better. Like, the whole therapy comes into point for two other times. And by the end of it, the therapist is just like, I'm done. <laughs> Whatever. So, boys rush on home together. They find their kids in the garage jamming. But then you have kind of a heart-to-heart -heart moment between Bill and Ted, where they realize, hey, we haven't done anything in 25 years that has been successful, anything useful. And Ted's like, maybe we should just throw in the towel. Yeah, he was talking about, he went to a store and was talking about so selling his guitar. guitar. And that is a truly tragic moment. I know. That was, like, sad. <laughs> but, of course, Bill is just like, oh, no, I don't know about that. Destiny. And right as they start thinking about it, well, bam, future. So, just time like traveler Rufus. drops on in. And who is this time traveler? It is Rufus's daughter. So, she's come from the past to scoop them on up and then see how to get this song in action. So, when you first were introduced, like, were you worried at all about it? No. No? <laughs> okay. The actress that plays here is awesome. So <laughs> yes, it was. I have no regrets with that casting decision. Mm -hmm. Good substitute. Very good substitute. And so, they go to the future, and that's where you see... The tribute, which we want to talk about, but so now we're going to talk about it. So George Carlin is a comedian very close and dear to my heart. Like I, I love his comedy, and I loved him playing Rufus. Like he did an amazing job, iconic. Like I wouldn't have thought he could be replaced. What the and, and and I mean he he was, but he wasn't. Like his hologram. Exactly. So they did it again in a very and it's a whole time explaining that this is the time capsule. And this I'm is what time. took the great ones into the past. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, like, so it wasn't done in a weird thing. It wasn't overdone. It was a tribute, you know? Just like, 
it was just a little moment. And then my daughter's like, hey, come on, guys, we've got to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> then they go in, meet with his wife. She reminds them, hey, we need you to complete the song. But the catch is it's by 7 p.m. tonight. Or else the whole world of reality itself is going to unfold. That's right, and as as this, she's giving this talk to them about what's happening. Like you see all sorts of weird things, like, oh my gosh! So one of the best things is like Jesus. <laughs> you see a bunch of blips from the past that get replaced into the future and the current timeline. It's like Babe Ruth is now in Jesus's time. Jesus is <laughs> is now in a freaking like I rave was, but George Washington turns into the therapy office yeah <laughs> it's like what <laughs> it's just like oh shit and the therapist is just like I'm done yeah I'm done. goodbye <laughs> <laughs> oh man but from there Bill and Ted decide hey instead of writing our song how about we just find ourselves in the future because they've already written the song so they start time hopping, and lo and behold, future Bill and Ted ain't shit. That's right. So the first thing is a couple of years, and it's just like, they, they've seen better days. Big time. You know, got a little, got Ted's drinking, and he never drinks. That's right. And they're trying to run away from themselves. Yeah. Oh, the first one, they didn't have the gut. That was just, he was a drinker, oh, and then, nice. yeah, and then Bill was just like this Silly asshole. <laughs> yep. And there was so many jokes about like talking and agreeing with yourself, beating your own ass. <laughs> it was like, Stop beating up past you. <laughs> but, yeah, so definitely a good beat down. And Ted pretty much blames other Ted and Bill for ruining their marriages. Yeah, because the time they their, Yeah, their wives left them. And apparently they went on some journey to find, like... Kids won't talk to them. Yeah. They're, they're deadbeats, essentially. Playing at a... I believe it's a hotel for a buffet. Yep. <laughs> Beautiful. But being seemingly disappointed with that, as I would be as well, mm -hmm. then they hop further into the future. But before that, <laughs> like, we go back into the future... And you, you hear Rufus's wife talking about some members of the council think that it's not them writing the song, but it's their death that change, changes the approach. So then we introduce <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> Which you don't know his name until later, but like at first you think he's going to be this badass robot because he looks super cool. He looks tough as hell. But <laughs> yeah. then he goes on to his mission, has sick laser blasters, and he can generate a time machine on himself. He just morphs into it. So he goes hopping in search of them, and you don't see him again for a while. Yeah, so that goes back to, is it that point where they do the daughters? At that, that point. They, they start, or is that after the mansion? No, it's kind of during. So, okay. we hop back to the daughters because Rufus's daughter hops back in time to the exact point where we left off. And he, so that's where she thinks and the robot's like, going to come. Oh, yeah. God, has like a big scary robot been through here to their daughters? And we're like, oh, no. So, they get this idea because they don't want to stick around and wait for the robot. They want to take the time machine. She can wait there for the robot. Then they can go find their dads an awesome band. Indeed. And oh my gosh, That's was it awesome. <laughs> First stop, Jimi Hendrix. That's right. He's not he's not so thrilled. He's pretty skeptical about all this. And of course, I mean it's Jimi Hendrix. I I wouldn't be surprised it's knowing a big fat no to begin. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, would you believe that at first at face value? Time travelers, no. So their solution is go back to one of the greatest black players in all of history. Louis Armstrong, sexual. And the actor that played him did such an amazing job. Like, with his voice, like, Louis Armstrong, if you actually hear, like, sound bites of his voice, he has an, an enormously hard voice to capture. But that actor did a great job Stop. catching the whole southern accent at the same time, though, having the graph gravelly, grassy voice. And this it's a it's a younger Louis, so... Mm -hmm. Before the fame. Yeah. 
But they managed to scoop him up. So, I mean, if you're in the 20s and you see a cell phone, wouldn't you go? Yeah, like, listening to on, that music? Yeah. Funky. <laughs> they show him a video of Jimi Hendrix playing, I think it was... Amazing Grace, I think? Yes, Amazing Grace. They were both doing Amazing yeah. Grace, yes. But they show him that, and he's like, well... Then hop back into the future to Jimi Hendrix's timeline. He's still then, kind of skeptical until yeah. Louis brings out his trumpet. trumpet. And at that point, it's just like, oh yeah, he's digging those vibes. <laughs> and then their journey really kicks off from there. But, all the way through time. But we flip back to two boys. Kids. Yep. And so they go back and they're just like in a mansion. They're like, whoa, this is awesome. Is this ours? And, and you ours. think it is. I mean, I mean, if you know the movies and you kind of get where the humor is going, you know it's not, but yeah. the, they definitely play it. <laughs> really well. Then you walk in and they both have English accents claiming they went on vacation with the whole family to medieval times for a while. Mm -hmm. And they just picked up on it. So they're talking kind of reminiscent of like the Rolling Stones. So they're dressed a lot <laughs> like them. <laughs> And Ted kind of looks like Nick Six from Molly Crew. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a weird to get up. <laughs> but they're drinking champagne out on this big patio, and they're saying that they've already wrote the song. They hand him a CD, and they're like, hey, guys. Now go. you've got the song. Got but as soon as they walk back out to the door, guess who's whose match in? it is? It's Dave Grohl. <laughs> <laughs> course he calls the SWAT team. Yeah, it's just like, who are you? What do you do in my house? It's like, oh. <laughs> and they shut the door in his face. And then they to run after the passives who are just kind of flopping out and drinking and getting undressed. And they're featured, yeah. And then they just, <laughs> they, it's a big chase. It's just like, you can't get rid of us. Oh, you're right. Because they know exactly what we're going to do. Yeah, but Bill pulls a gun on Bill. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> and then, in order to get out, I have to do something unpredictable. Which is still predicted, because they're like, oh, I was hoping they wouldn't, wouldn't do, do the that. thing. Just put buckets over their heads and try and to get out. And oh my gosh, that thud when they fell. <laughs> I was just like, oh! <laughs> but they proceed to stand up while the SWAT team, which includes Ted's dad, and everyone are out there trying to figure out what's going on. And then, lo and behold... They're able to run, make it to the time machine. And then who makes the appearance? Dun, dun, dun. My brain just emptied. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, cut! Yeah, what was his name? Dennis. Dennis, 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 yes. Okay, so, then once they get to the time machine, Dennis the robot appears. He's there to vanquish them. But... <laughs> They happen to swoop through time a little too fast, and instead, Dennis kills off Ted's dad. Yeah. So, Ted's dad ends up in hell. And that's when you start to see Dennis's first quirks of, like, <laughs> oh no, what yeah. have I done? Dennis has a bit of a mental crisis throughout the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh. And then he goes back to the chase. Indeed. But then, we dart back to the to girls. girls. And they are traveling. They meet Mozart. Mozart. Oh my gosh. One of the best scenes of the whole movie, I think. Mozart Hendrix music battle. That's One of right. The best scenes by so far. well. And Mo like, let me tell you, Mozart, one of the most intense people that uh, of the cast. He's like all gun ho about. Doesn't speak a lick of English throughout the entire movie. <laughs> but he's just all gun ho about it. He's just like. <laughs> The same between him and Jimi Hendrix, he's playing his own piece and like showing it off to this room full of people. Yeah, Richard. But Strat, yeah. Jimmy just plugs in his guitar into an amp they have in the time machine and mm -hmm. starts playing the same song because he already knows it. And Mozart's at first just like, it's like, Where's what? The song from? What is that? And then, but then it gets worse. <laughs> and then they just play and then play and it just gets more and more intense. He's and then trying finally, to do each other. And <laughs> Mozart gets so excited, he jumps off the hopsy court and just starts jabbering in German. Like, and, like, runs down the stairs, <laughs> comes outside, and he's like, what is this? Why are you playing my song? I know my song. <laughs> that joins the Motley crew. Indeed, and what a crew it was. Mm -hmm. And it just gets better. <laughs> Only better. 
<laughs> so, jumping back to Bill and Ted, Ted. Mm. they jump into the future again, because they've already been betrayed by themselves twice. So, then from there, the future selves are in prison. <laughs> because of Dave Grohl. <laughs> Dave Grohl. They took the rat. Yep. <laughs> they were still in his house, so they got arrested and they're beefed out. Oh Even my in the gosh. Trailer, but Tatted out as well. They're trying to make songs with all the other inmates just banging things on the ground. And it's like a little long-running joke there. <laughs> where it's just like, that's not a song. Is that a song? Yeah, it was so awkward. And then they try to prevent them from leaving. Yes. It's, it's like they want to the... fight. And then, in the middle of the chaos, Dennis. Dennis comes. And you realize that Dennis is not as hardcore as he seems. No. He gets easily taken down. He gets just jumped by all the inmates because they realize, wait, if we let him kill them, we aren't going to be existing. Mm -hmm. So they decide just to prison beat him. So yeah. Beat him to the ground. And then Bill and Ted manage to slip away. But before they get away, their wives have also started Pop time in. traveling with yep. their old selves mm -hmm. to see if they can find a reason to stay with Bill and Ted. So they have a little moment where they all meet. They're like, oh my god, is that you guys looking at the prison version of that? And they're like, it's okay, we're going to fix it, we're going to fix it. It's going to be better. And then they just jump back into the future. And yeah, that is a further. big running joke. Like, they run into each other all the time. Yep, constant battle. <laughs> oh, it's going to get better. But uh, they also zoom into the past because they want to yes. prevent their wives from getting in the time machine. Oh, that's the cells. second therapy scene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but when they go back to explain, the therapist is just like, what's happening? You guys need to see me like five times a week. Like, <laughs> what is happening? And, and then at the end of that, George Washington like appears after they all left. Yep, yeah, because the time transportation manages to pop other people out of their own timeline. Yeah, which is another one where you see Jesus like walking across the Delaware with revolutionary soldiers. Yep. It's like, what? <laughs> it's so absurd. Yep. yep. <laughs> but after you see the prison, then we jump back to the girls, and then they're getting one of the most legendary flute players of all time, and that is Ling Lun. Yes. So. They manage to coerce her pretty easily. Mozart does most of the talking there, even though... They can't sure. understand a word of each <laughs> other. Maybe she's speaking Chinese. Like, yeah. Let me play your flute. Aha, I can play flute. And they're like, band? And yeah. she just comes playing along. Yeah, Mozart, for like, not speaking a lick of English, was probably one of my favorites of that Molly group. Because he was he so... excited. Yeah, he was just so excited about everything. And he probably had no clue what the hell was going on. It was just like, sweet! It's like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> but, um, after we hit the Mozart bit, then they do a big travel into a, well, no, B.C. No, yeah, oh, yeah, the big travel into B.C., and then they go to present time, yeah. Yep, but they go to B.C. to get Grom, who's the world's most infinite drum player, apparently. Indeed. He's beating on leathers with bones, like... It's like 1,100,000 like, B.C., something like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy, but they managed to convince her to go along. Yeah, they scared her at first. She freaking ran off, or I don't know if it was a he or her, but yeah, scared them off. Mm -hmm. Mozart chases after her. Yep. Mozart just, just doesn't care. He's like, we need you. Yeah. So, manages to do that convincing. And then they all hop back to where they're supposed to be. And right as they're about to go practice all together in the girl's garage, guess who shows up? Dennis. And, of course, he instinctually thinks it's Bill and Ted, because they sound similar, they mm -hmm. look similar. And so just on principle, he blasts them and all the musicians, which kills them all and sends them all. And uh, Rufus's daughter as well. Yep. <laughs> kills them all by accident, and then and he a freaks out. about it. He's just like... He doesn't know what to do. He starts glitching. <laughs> yeah, you like see the whole like... <laughs> so we leave Rufus there, and we jump back to Bill and Ted, who have now traveled to the far, far future. Which is where they meet their old bedroom themselves. They're just chilling in their room, just On laying down, <laughs> dying pretty much. And they manage to get 
an actual what's it called? A USB drive. Oh yeah, the yep. And it just says Preston and Logan on the back. Mm -hmm. And then where they're supposed to be, which is MP forty six. So they're like, wait, this is the song, and they're like, yep, you guys need to do it. And they have a little heart to heart with themselves. Ted talks to himself, but he's like, I feel like I never got to know you. <laughs> yeah, a lot of big like, jokes. I never for opened it. up to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bill's just having a whole love fest with himself. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I I was just like, it's like what's worse when you're talking with yourself or when you agree with yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and on top of it, they're like, they notice these pictures on their bedside table, which are of their wives, and they're like, oh my god. So the girls are still with you guys? And they're like, yes. And no, because they see the old ladies get into the time machine that Bill and Ted left outside. Yeah, which is, again, the running joke. They always run into each other, like, right after each other. Yep. But them being stuck there in the far future, because they no longer have the time machine, results out as who shows up? Dennis! <laughs> and with that... Dennis just starts to have kind of a colossal freak out. Oh yeah, because it's like, I have to kill you, but we have the song! And then he's just like, but wait, I have to absolve myself of this guilt, because I just killed your family and everyone you love. That's like, wait, what? You killed our kids? He's like, yes! And he just like, starts like freaking out. Then you must like, shoot us! We don't have the song anymore! And he's, he's just like, like I, I, can't. I can't! Must, must kill myself! And <laughs> they just, they just hug him. tried to convince, but they run to hug him. Next thing you know, the wives pop into the far future with themselves. Yeah. And they just see them get obliterated with this blast. But I immediately, guess. voila! Dennis, the boys, they're in hell. Oh my gosh. Who's in hell? Death. Yeah. Oh my gosh, but we missed <laughs> the part where all the, the, the first group that was killed went to hell. Because it's just like one after another, you just say plop, 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 plop. And then, wait for it, plop. <laughs> so they all walk to the curve, and they're just kind of like, oh shit, we're all in hell. I'm sorry, guys. Like, I don't know what to do. So they begin manual labor, you know, what Indeed. you do in hell. And then going back to the boys, like, it's just like, that's where you first hear Dennis's name. I forget what the full name was. It was like Dennis. <laughs> Dennis Caleb McCoy. Yep. <laughs> and and he's just like, like, I have a name. I have a name. <laughs> name? Dennis Caleb McCoy? They're just like, oh my god, fine. It's Dennis like, Caleb McCoy, come with us. We get it. You're, you're uh, an insecure <laughs> robot who has issues, is somehow dead. And in hell. And they immediately <laughs> on that because yeah. they're walking into this cavern and they meet some like demons. demons. Then like the demons after they're walking go in, they're like, oh, nice guys. But was that a robot? A robot Not in hell? hell. <laughs> it doesn't take itself too seriously at all, which is great. Yeah, like that's how you're able to get away with that kind of humor. Because it's really dumb humor if you think about it. Like, no one is this dumb. <laughs> But so, making fun of it is just the perfect way to get away with it. And then, as the boys and Dennis explore through hell to find the kids, they finally find a giant pit. And then the kids, all the musicians, are down in there just digging around. And of course, there's a beautiful reuniting where they get high yes. fives and hugs. But from there on, it's strictly business. They, have, right. to they have to get out of hell. They gotta get out of there. They need another musician. So, of course, the part you see in the trailer. Yes. They catch death through a doorway, cheating at hopscotch. Mm -hmm. And then catch him a little off guard. And it immediately jumps into the whole legal thing that happened with the breakup. Of yeah, the so apparently he, he liked hogging the bass time a lot. Three minutes so low. <laughs> and he thought he was Wild Stallions. So they had a whole lawsuit going on, and they tried suing him for taking the She's like, is this close enough for you? Close enough. <laughs> is this too close? <laughs> but Death keeps pretty much shutting him out, closing the door, and just being like, nope, we have nothing more to say. So the girls go in. And the girls are his number one fans. They know his solo album. And they even know the bass parts, all of them, because that's all that's on the album. 
<laughs> he yelled. <laughs> and so they butter him up a little with compliments and talk about certain parts of songs that they thought were good and kind of shitty from him. He yelled. <laughs> but in the end, they all get to make up and the boys and Death are all back together. Oh yeah, and he found out that apparently <laughs> Death got demoted because of the first time he got him out of hell. <laughs> they were not supposed to go back. No. <laughs> but he has a luxury apartment, so I mean... Indeed. He's dead. He'll do whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> <laughs> but going from there, we also forgot to mention that Ted's dad is in hell. It yes. It's an apology that seems like it's directed to the boys, but it's actually directed to Billy. Yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> Not the boys. Yeah. It's just like, so, I wasn't talking to you guys. <laughs> luckily, the SWAT van got dragged to hell when they got blasted, so everyone just packs up in there. And then Dennis begs to come along. I didn't even realize the absurdity of that. The swap that is in hell. I didn't even realize that at the time. <laughs> and Dennis makes his way into the van, crushing everyone's toes on his way in. Mm -hmm. Sits down. And then Death is like, it's time. Let's rock. <laughs> and then Dennis is like, you have made me want to rock. And he's like, no, you can't just rock. You have you to earn, earn it. it. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just... Zoom out of hell and probably kill some poor flying demons all the way out because you hear a bunch of thuds hitting the top of the Yeah, people wow. call the hell demons, whatever. <laughs> and then we're it's like 9/11 back all over to again. the future, but the SWAT van spawns right in the middle of a highway. So there's a bunch of stopped cars. It's the because they're trying to figure out where this venue is. The uh, MP MP46. And they're looking around, they don't know what to do. And the world's stuck. falling apart. And there's people from all kinds of different timelines just freaking sitting around. Freaking Roman legionnaires everywhere. Freaking <laughs> the pyramids are Very in downtown. downtown. <laughs> like, everything's messed up. But the girls notice there's a mile marker on the side of the road that says MP46. Oh, yeah. And so conveniently, there's a guitar center <laughs> van. Yeah, right, right, right. And a big empty semi-trailer. So they set up a stage, and Kid Cudi. Kid Cudi is the thing holding everything together. Yeah, like he, he makes an appearance out. earlier. We kind of skipped out on his role a little bit, but yeah, he he's comes in earlier. Passing through time. Yeah, he's just lost in time essentially because he's really big into that. Like we tried to figure out what the word for it was, but yeah, he's really into like <laughs> parallel dimensions and stuff like that. And, Alternate realities. So he pretty much just schools everyone to a point that they're like, hold on, can you like explain that? Just like, like, yes. Dumb that down Use for people us. words. <laughs> and by that, in the time machine, there's an infinity button. So they determine they have to take instruments to everyone in all different dimensions and timelines. Mm -hmm. So they press that, and all of a sudden, there's like a bazillion Bill and Ted's running around distributing instruments. It's like, I'm essentially an infinite me. Mm hmm. Whoa. Gives his brother a saxophone and Missy a uh, ukulele. Ukulele. But the whole world, all times included, start playing this song. At first, it's god awful. No one's in time. Nothing. Yeah, there's no structure to it at all. Everyone's doing their own little instrument. But then they start with drums. Then they get some bass going. Because they realize the truth behind the whole unity. Yes, exactly. It's not Bill and Ted that's that does it. Mm -hmm. It's their daughters, which we both saw coming a mile away. But <laughs> it, it didn't still, knock the value of it. No, it really Even didn't. though you could tell it was going to happen, it was still a good build-up. And there are more DJs than anything. They're just messing with mixers and stuff and getting everyone to play. Yeah, but super fun. the whole world unites as the sky is opening and there's like a bunch of weird blue kind of strandy thing starting to wiggle into the world. But the song in Unity saves everything. That's right. The and world the is at peace. chills on the earth. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was super fun. It was and, a great ride. Yeah, and then everything in the future is good. The past is good. Everyone's back to their Little Ted and the princesses are all happy together because they realized that the only timeline they were happy together was in the one they were all along in. Indeed. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> but then, if you stay until the very end of the credits, 
What, well, yeah, there is a scene, but I want to talk about, like, all the stuff you saw before, like, the main credits started rolling, because that was actually really cool. Like, I loved all the, like, they had, like, people all over the world dancing, like, the other characters. That's also where Weird Al made his appearance. Yep, he's just at the very end credits, so this is a bit of him playing his instrument and rocking out. Yeah, like, they, they, like, that was probably one of the best end credit, like, not end credit, but, like, montage, montage endings. endings. Solid. Indeed. Plus, you get to see, like, all of these weird little historical characters dance and all the credits, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jesus gets sent <laughs> back to his own time. Cowbell. Yeah. Cowbell. Cowbell. <laughs> More cowbell. It's great. <laughs> Jesus was one of my favorite, just like running jokes. Because <laughs> he just. It was so ridiculous. The scenes that they, they put it in. Mm -hmm. It was prime. And then you get to the end credit scene, which I'm not sure how many people like knew was a thing. Well, I'm sure someone figured. Yeah, you, everyone has to. At this point, I've seen enough movies, everyone stays to the. Not everyone, but there are people that'll stay to the end because you never know. Mm -hmm. But this end credit scene was legit and the best way to just end it. They're on their deathbeds. It's old them again, and they're like, "We need to do one last thing before we die." After going through, "Are you dead yet? No. Are you <laughs> dead yet? No." And they're just wheezing. They can barely move. But you see them get up and plug their guitars into the amps. You see two old men shredded out That's for one right. last time. And then they call out for nurse. Yep. <laughs> they overexert themselves. Yep. An end to a beautiful trilogy. Oh, yeah. So, what a watch. Indeed. All right, so we, we actually didn't do the score, like, during the thing, but... So, with all that said, what would you give this out of ten? I would give it a solid... The only reason I don't give it a full 10 is because I am sad to see this series finally go down yeah. and just fade out. But it's definitely worth a bunch of watches, and I can't wait until it comes out on DVD. Definitely buying it. Yeah. I give it an 8 also because, again, really sad that to watch it end. But they did an amazing job. Like, it's definitely worth a watch. And the one thing I still wish is that they had Melvin Death at least one time. Yep. <laughs> like, it's the one reference I wish they included. But you can't always get what you want. Indeed. But it was an amazing movie. I had a great time watching it. And I was not disappointed. It definitely is worth the money. Whether or not you see it in theaters or you see it on whatever streaming service you happen to be watching it on. Definitely worth it. Just spend a day. Watch all three. Exactly. It'll it was perfect. worth it. Alright, well that was it for that. Bill and Ted face the music complete. Indeed. Thank you again for joining me. Always a pleasure. Sporadic guest, but one that I'm always glad to have when I do get her. <laughs> Then you all stay safe out there during this COVID-19 pandemic going on. Yep. And wear your masks. Always wear the masks and wash your hands. Wash your damn hands. hands. <laughs> <Nasty>. Blah. <laughs> See you guys.